Hello everyone. Thanks to be here. Thanks, Nicola. Uh, so welcome to, to our talk about uh, how we, we try to improve the, our, our productivity at Auslandia about, uh, about uh, plugin development for QGIS. Uh, so we present uh, right now, I, I'm going to present you some uh, a new tool that uh, we call the uh, QGIS plugin templater. It's maybe yet another plugin, uh, QGIS plugin uh, generator but uh, I'm, I'm going to try to, to convince you why, what was a good idea, and uh, how it helped us today to, to make uh, our plugin better, and uh, especially more uh, make uh, the production of plugin more reliable. Okay, this is not the green button. This is not the green button. Da -da -da. It works. So who am I? I'm uh, Julian Mara. I work uh, by day. I work at Auslandia as a senior, not so senior, but senior JS uh, consultant. And uh, by, by night, sometime, I uh, I put on my my uh, benevol costume on uh, to to lead animate uh, a French speaking website about. Uh, uh, about open source uh, geospatial for, for 10 years, we called uh, GeoTribu. So if you want to, to get in touch and uh, if you want to learn how to speak French about JS, yeah, yeah you, you know where, where to go. So one, there is like one more bit, a bit more, one more for a uh, year later, um, yeah, there is a, from, Ago, sorry, uh, we make we made a statement. We are out of Slandia. We produces a lot of plugin because uh, we offer our services for that. Uh, some of them are really complicated, or some of them are not so complicated. But they, they are, we we have a lot. Uh, the, the the great majority of them are open source. Uh, some some are closed for the for some client reason. Not for, for not for us, and uh, we in the statement we we we, we saw like a, a great heterogeneity in our plugins, uh, depending on uh, which year they have been produced or which developer on the uh, which developer in the, in the time. So we also made the statement that the that the plugin still can make crash QGIS. QGIS, and uh, it's not good for the reputation or for the the. the the half of the project, and then for my core committers colleagues, which are grumbling about, uh, oh, this is a bad plugin, ah, blah, blah, blah. So I, I, we wanted to, to help us to, to have a nice day every day. And uh, yeah, we, spend, we, we were spending too much time to maintain our plugin, but sometimes plugin made by something else, and um, there, are, there is a, too much heterogeneity. So, also, we are developer, don't, so we wanted to automate our workflow to make it more generic, more, um, more, uh, more shared. And we are a team of developers, so we needed to have uh, a talk about our common practices, about uh, one of our uh, main product uh, realization on the QG side in our activity. So <clears throat> we wanted some goals, uh, standardize our numerous uh, plugin, Rationalize support and maintenance because this, this is as a cost, uh, human and money. Use modern tools because sometimes we were so so stuck in the maintenance of old code, uh, we we didn't have time to look after the new uh, continu continuous integration and deployment tool belt or something there. Oh no, no, no time. So just 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 make a make a patch and go on, and uh, and we we wanted. To, to get some something uh, enough enough uh, flexible uh, to to keep up to date up to date to the good practices uh, not the best but good practices and uh, uh, and keep on uh, uh, improving ourselves so uh, we we made a state of the art of the well-known tools to get started, to have a, a quick start plugin or to get a boilerplate. And uh, some, some are, here are, are some of uh, we have considered. So the first one is a minimal plugin. We love it because uh, we are developers, so we, are, we love the, the minimal, uh, the minimalist thing. There are, it, remembers us, it remembers us that the plugin can be only three-fourths 
and it's a good thing. But for us, we are we we need when clients are coming to us. It's not just to a simple plugin. It's more complicated. So. So they, we need some industry needs, industry ready production, and it was too much time to add the, the other stuff we need, so our test documentations, illustrations, uh, translations, logic, etc., etc. And uh, it's also such a space of liberty for the developer. It was uh, something what favorizing or uh, pushing uh, the, the heterogeneity up. So every, every project was, uh, is two different at the end. The second one is the, the most used. I think here someone, uh, who maybe everyone has already used it, uh, trying to make a, a, a plugin for QGIS. It's a, it's a plugin builder. It's an historical tool, still maintained, not so actively, but still, still working. Uh, there is a bunch of resources, so, so it's really cool with uh, a community. It's really, but it's really convenient for beginners, for proof of concept, with tutorials or teaching. We still we still use it, but it's it also carries a lot of modules or tech choices. Some some of them are in our in our um, in our mind too much opinionated uh, and uh, not corresponding to our needs. And also, it's not so cr cross-platform. It was a goal because we need to, we want our plugin works on the platform that QGIS supports, including macOS and Windows. And uh, so sometimes we need to test to come uh, to, to port on a virtual machine with Windows to test the plugin and sometimes to, to patch it or to develop on it. So we need it to, to a development uh, tool, uh, tool chain, full compatible with those uh, operating system. This third tool we considered is a PB tool. It's, it's a CLI under the command line uh, interface underlying the plugin builder. It's uh, like a, a configuration oriented tool uh, with the .cfg, pb, pb tool, uh, uh, .cfg file uh, where, where inside there is uh, everything you, you want to manage your, your QGIS development workflow. Uh, but it was, the problem is like, it's too related to the plugin builder. So it was a bit hard to us to, to modify it without uh, uh, negotiating with, uh, with uh, all the community. And uh, we needed something more specific uh, to fit our needs. So also it's like the configuration file is like a, a micro framework to, to learn more. And we wanted to, to get stuck with the, with the Python stack uh, to, to make it more homogeneous. So our decision, we, we started the project using the cookie cutter, a cookie cutter template. It's a, it's a tool or a micro framework to, <laughs> to, uh, to generate project uh, from, uh, from template. So, and uh, we, we built it. You can see the, the documentation page here if you want to uh, give, it a, uh, give it a look during, uh, during my speak. Why? Main reason, cookie cutter is a well installed, a well, uh, well installed and well known tool. It's used by a lot of big projects too, uh, like Django or Flask, uh, to make the boilerplate for web application, for example, or web API. It's based on robust libraries like Jinja 2. It's like a, a good library for templating uh, files, like HTML, etc. It's developer oriented. Definitely, it's a command line. There is no UI. No UI. It's only command line. It's really flexible. I will talk a, a bit about it later. And it's Python, so it's it's matching the stack needed to develop on uh, on packages. How to make it? So it just uh, it's like a, a cookie cutter course like right now for the third uh, for the three next slides. It just just a cookie cutter file JSON where we we ask uh, where where we list the question. It's like you have some option to generate your project. You have a template, and you have options uh, where, when the developer will run the, the, the generation, he will be prompted about, uh, do you want uh, this is a vector plugin, or this is a database plugin? There is no the voice included. You have to, to, to code it yourself. So here's what it, it looks in our project. Uh, obviously, if you want two questions, you have the right. If you want uh, 500, do not. Uh, 
Uh, templating file, this is the second, uh, the second ingredient for this, uh, the, this, uh, this logic, this template logic. There are the templating files. So you can see there, you, if you know Jinja2 uh, syntax, this is like the two bracket uh, surrounding values, and you can also make loops, uh, if conditions, etc. So it's really smart, it's quite powerful. And on this, uh, we can see here, the, this is the main instance of the, of the plugin. Uh, and uh, for, um, for example, we, see, we, we can see that the class will take the name uh, of the uh, plugin name class passed uh, during the product generation and uh, a, a bit uh, below, like the, uh, if, the, uh, if, the, if the plugin is a processing one, was processing, so the line uh, will, uh, will be added or not. So it's really powerful and uh, pretty convenient to, uh, to generate a plugin or project. Uh, depending on uh, on option, it's also possible to run hooks before and after the project generations, and it's really really convenient to validate some uh, some answers uh, because we have some developers like uh, oh yes in, if I put an emoji in the plugin name what else so like this or under special cases or clean up some files. Well, for example, here to uh, to validate the name. To use it on the developer side, the end user developer side, uh, you need install cookie cutter. Uh, it's regular Python package, very classic. It does not carry uh, the half of, uh, of PyP. Uh, it's, uh, it has a bit of dependencies, but it's not so much. It's, uh, it works on every platform with Python. And after you have just to run like the cookie cutter with the URL of your, your template. This is interesting because it's the point we, may, we choose to make a template for Oslandia. Uh, it's like everyone can use it, obviously, or, or propose Pierre, but it's a template to fit to our development guidelines and uh, our needs on, the, on, the, on plugin QG's development. Okay? So, you know, they download and after there are questions. See, if you don't like questions, uh, you can uh, override them with uh, default values or uh, in your, in your, in your uh, user, uh, user space or uh, avoid it and use the default values. Can be not a good idea, but is all, all it's working. So we launched, uh, we launched the, 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 the template uh, generation, it first download all the repository and make a lot of, uh, of checkup. And uh, to, if you have already downloaded, etc., it's, uh, it, uh, I don't know if you can see it very well, but mm. well, you can see when I, I get, uh, I'm between a, a simple bracket, I don't know how, but um, you can see the default values. And after you, you, you so it's pretty, pretty quick to answer using the default values, or you can uh, enter yourself uh, text or, or answers, obviously. <clears throat> so uh, at the end, yes, it's a bit long, <laughs> but. Maybe it's time for harmonica. <laughs> no. Yes, and the, the, the plugin is, uh, is obviously in a, in a, in a subfolder plugin, uh, plugin, demo plugin, and uh, they are like the whole structure. Alors, what you get, uh, it depends on your answers, obviously, but let's have a look with the default. The, with the, default. Uh, the first module we, we, pushed, we put into, it's like the settings form and the logic uh, under. Why? Because in, uh, in the most of our plugin, we need some, uh, we, we systematically add a, a settings, how to manage, a QGIS settings, etc. So it's a generic form using a logic really, really flexible and really powerful uh, uh, with a Python data class. And it also bring uh, a log, a logger, a plugin loader, a uh, logger, sorry, with a debug mode. Uh, by default, there is like a verbose mode uh, on our plugin. It, it's really convenient for debugging and uh, for uh, user, uh, user feedback. 
And uh, you may, may have noted this is the, the, the settings form is uh, well integrated in the option page. There is a full documentation setup based uh, on Sphinx with Markdown and uh, restricted uh, text included. And the documentation generated helps the developer to uh, to manage the template once it's uh, generated. So okay, like auto documentation, quite something like this. And uh, yes, it's using uh, the metadata take step to, to fill the home page. And uh, there are setup pages already included. We also configure some uh, development tools, uh, pre-commit, uh, uh, git, uh, git hooks, a changelog, linters, uh, formatter, etc. Some unit tests. If you have uh, already tried, uh, developed uh, uh, QGIS plugins, it's quite, quite hard to, to make it uh, work on uh, CI, etc. So we choose to, to split our test between Python module we can be test, which can be tested with a PyQGIS, so QGIS install, and the other one. And we give one example of, the, of, of both to, uh, to, uh, to manage it. And uh, we, uh, you, we soon will integrate PyTest QGIS uh, developed by Gispo Coding. Hi, if you are here, it's a nice tool. The, 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 big size, the big side of this uh, template is like the continuous integration and deployment configurations, saving hours, hours uh, to, uh, to write a YAML, which is uh, the triggering the good thing in the good order, etc., etc. Uh, so uh, it's, uh, it's uh, already included for GitHub Actions and GitLab CI. Uh, it's obviously running linter test, etc. And we use uh, the wonderful library QGIS plugin CI, I, uh, OpenGIS and Freelies, Freelies, to package release and publish automatically the, the plugin uh, to the official uh, plugin uh, repository on a Git tag or uh, on, a, on a custom one. Uh, which is included in the documentation, which is automatically deployed also on the GitLab or GitHub pages uh, static website. For example, on GitLab, and uh, we, we can note that the, the translation is built and uh, generated during the CI, uh, so it's a, it's, a, it's a good practice, even in the same in, uh, in GitHub. Little extra, there are also uh, templates for issues and uh, pull requests and configuration for IDE. Uh, for now, there is only VS Code, but it can be extended. So if you want to test the result, like uh, the default, but you can, the, the, the project is using its own logic to publish also a template to, to, to generate a, a default plugin and publish it on the GitLab pages of the project of the template project, if you didn't follow me neither. So you can put the, the custom repository URL and test it, uh, what, what, it did, what it does. So after one year at Oslandia, so we are quite, uh, quite happy, quite convinced that it was a good idea. Uh, it uh, speeded up our plugin development, especially to bootstrap a new one. It's not convenient uh, at all to upgrade previous plugin, but it was not the goal. Uh, reduce the maintenance, rising up the zero-day zero uh, quality of our plugins, and making all plugins similar. Uh, and it also uh, quite side effect, uh, positive side effect. It's also like open some discussion about uh, take choices, <coughs> or, uh, or presenting some uh, tips or good solution, good practices to share it uh, into the team. And uh, we are developers, so we love to talk about uh, VI, Emacs. And uh, wow, this linter is better than the other one. Let's talk about a beer, uh, around the beer. So in conclusion, it's definitely not an option for a beginner a developer on the site. Let's uh, let put it in, in, in between it and uh, the plugin builder. It's better for this, for this, uh, for this goal because it, la it carries a lot of technical uh, choices and concepts that can be hard to assimilate. Our template is like this. The templating logic is a good option to rationalize development uh, at uh, an industry level uh, uh, production. And most important, this templater, this is a template, not the template for a QGIS plugin. So if it doesn't fit your needs, make your own and share it, obviously. And uh, for example, other, uh, other company, Gispo Coding, that I already mentioned, uh, uh, created an, uh, one uh, on, our, on their site. Thank you for your attention.